Hello, we are discussing about gate 2014 ECE paper. Look at the root locus plot given. This is given for a um, closed loop system with unity ne negative feedback. And characteristic equation of that system is given as 1 plus k into g of s is equal to 0. This is characteristic equation. And from the root locus, if we can find that one, the open loop transfer function g of s. It has a pole at origin that is 0 and double pole at minus 1 that is 2 poles at minus 1 and this root locus is showing for a varying value of k and if a constant damping ratio line that is constant damping ratio is nothing but zeta a constant zeta value of 0.5 if you draw a line for that one then it is intersecting the root locus at point a. So this is the point, point A is the intersecting point when you are drawing a constant damping ratio line of 0.5 and it has given that one the distance from origin to A point is given as 0.5 and you are going to calculate the value of K at point A, value of K at point A, A is on root locus, okay. So look at this one. What was given is characteristic equation. Characteristic equation is nothing but denominator of closed loop transfer function. The general equation of closed loop transfer function is equal to g by 1 plus gh. Okay. And denominator if you are equating it to 0 then it is called as characteristic equation. And denominator is going to be related to poles. Poles of closed loop system. Denominator of closed loop transfer function is nothing but poles of closed loop system. So, which is nothing but if you are making it to 0, this characteristic equation is going to be relating to poles of closed loop system and as k changes, the value of their pole locations are going to be get changes. So, from this one, we can obtain the varying position that is variation of closed loop poles with respect to k. As k varies, location of poles changes. So, variation of closed loop poles of a given open loop system with unity feedback as k varies is shown with the help of this root locus. Okay. So, this root locus is related to this characteristic equation and the point on this root locus is definitely satisfying this equation. Any point S which is on the root locus that definitely satisfies this characteristic equation because the closed loop poles are going to be related to this one only. Okay. Now, if you observe this k into g of s is equal to taken as minus 1 and if you take magnitude of k into g of s that will be equal to 1. So, magnitude of k into g of s is equal to 1 for any value of s. For any value of s which is on root locus. Which is on root locus. So, now if you are checking point A, point A is on root locus. So, for that one also magnitude of k into g of s at s is equal to A is also satisfies this equation and g of s can be written g of s is open loop transfer function which consisting of three poles the three poles one is at origin the other poles are at minus one so this is g of s so simply k into one by s into s plus one whole square at s is equal to a is equal to one this equation if you solve for a given value of a you can get the value of k required the required value of k obtained if you know the value of a. So, we need to calculate point a first and later that point a is going to be substituted in place of s in this equation to get the required value of k. Okay. Now, we will see how to calculate point a for the given information. So, I am drawing it again. This is sigma and it is j omega and this is point A. 
and it has given that one it is origin and the distance is 0.5 and if you are projecting it on j omega axis as well as real axis sigma axis so this will be treated as j omega part that is nothing but j value and it is related to the real axis so sigma so we will consider this point and this point and the intersection angle that is angle of intersection of the straight line with negative real axis is theta and it has given that one constant damping ratio is zeta is equal to 0.5 so this is the angle theta we know that one cos theta is equal to zeta ok and from this one zeta is equal to cos inverse of theta is equal to cos inverse of zeta which is nothing but theta is equal to cos inverse of zeta value is 0.5 so cos inverse of 0.5 is nothing but 60 degrees ok so now we will calculate using this theta value of 60 degrees you are going to obtain the real part as well as imaginary part of this point A ok for that one we will use first sin theta from the sin theta definition sin theta theta value is 60 degrees so sin 60 is equal to ok this part that is opposite side divided by hypotenuse opposite side is j omega divided by hypotenuse is 0.5 and sin 60 is 0.866 ok 0.866 which is nothing but root 3 by 2 and next j omega is equal to you can write it as 0.3 by 2 into 0 0.5 0 0.5 can be written as 1 by 2 so this will be equal to root 3 by 4 so omega part is going to be known so in this one a is equal to you are writing it as something as j this one and this part is known that is nothing but root 3 by 4 next you are going to calculate from cos theta from cos theta cos theta is ok this side that is sigma divided by ok hypotenuse 0.5 so this will be cos theta is equal to cos 60 cos 60 is already given as ok 0.5 so 0.5 is equal to sigma by 0.5 cos theta is already known cos theta is zeta, zeta is equal to 0.5 so sigma is equal to 0.5 into 0.5 which is nothing but 0.25 which you can write it as minus 1 by 4 so real part is 1 by 4 and imaginary part is root 3 by 4 so a can be written as a value can be known as a is equal to minus 1 by 4 plus j root 3 by 4 so now a value has to be substituted in this equation ok in this equation you are going to substitute a value to know the k value so now this is what the equation k times of 1 by s into s plus 1 whole square with s is equal to a a is equal to minus 1 by 4 plus j root 3 by 4 is equal to 1 so now simplify this will be minus 1 by 4 plus j root 3 by 4 multiplying with 1 minus 1 by 4 this is plus 1 whereas it is minus 1 by 4 so this will become 3 by 4 plus j root 3 by 4 whole square is equal to 1 now take the magnitude that is k divided by magnitude of this part so we know that one whenever there is a plus j b ok uh, then the magnitude is going to be square root of a square plus b square so using this formula you are going to write it as square root of 1 by 4 whole square plus root 3 by 4 whole square that is 3 by 16 and it will become 1 by 16 square root multiplying with next square root of 3 by 4 whole square that is nothing but 9 by 16 plus root 3 by 4 whole square that is 3 by 16 square root and this is also again there is a total square so this square and the square root what it cancels that is equal to 1 now simplify 
this is k divided by okay square root of 1 by 16 plus 3 by 16 so it will be 4 by 16 into okay this is square and root get cancelled so that it will be 12 by 16 directly 12 by 16 is equal to 1 so k is equal to root of 4 by 6 is nothing but root of 1 by 4 into 3 by 4 so root of 1 by 4 is nothing but 1 by 2 and this is 3 by 4 which is nothing but 3 by 8 k is equal to k value is 3 by 8 which is nothing but 0.375 so the value of k at point a is 0.375 so the right answer for this question is 0.375 0.375 is the right answer. Thank you.